The age old question is what is the difference between SOAP and REST APIs and which one is right for my project? The two most famous web services that is available today is SOAP and REST. So if you're looking for a resource that provides you with an answer to this age old question, you've come to the right place. Hi all, welcome to the session on REST versus SOAP. Before we begin, I'd like to address the agenda. Firstly, we will talk about what is SOAP and what is REST and then we'll address the main topic of today's session and discuss the differences between REST and SOAP. Then we will also understand in what situations or scenarios we could use REST and SOAP. And then finally, we'll conclude the session by discussing some of the challenges that are faced in REST and SOAP API. I hope the agenda is clear. Kindly take up this time to subscribe to us and do not forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from the Edureka YouTube channel. Also to learn more about new trending technologies, visit our page the link to which is given in the description box below. So without much ado, let's get started. What is SOAP? Now SOAP is simply a protocol which was designed way before REST came into the picture. The main idea behind designing SOAP was to ensure that Programs that are built on different platforms and programming languages like Java, HTML, Python could really exchange data in a very easy manner. SOAP here stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. So in short, we could say that it is a messaging protocol specification for exchanging structured information that is data in the implementation of web services and computer networks. So that's what really SOAP is. Let's move on and understand what is REST. Now REST was designed specifically for working with components such as media components, files or even objects on a particular hardware device. Any web service that is defined on the principles of REST can be called as a RESTful web service. Now a RESTful web service would use the normal HTTP verbs of get, post, put and delete for working with the required components. Now if you've been acquainted with computer science before, I'm sure you must be aware of these terms that I just mentioned that is get, post, put, delete, etc. Now all of these are methods that are used to do some specific function within the web service. But as of now, we're not going to discuss any of these in detail. And here REST really stands for representational state transfer. So in short, you could say that a REST API is simply an application programming interface that conforms to the constraints of REST architectural style and allows for interaction with RESTful web services. With this, let's move on to the main part of today's session and discuss the differences between SOAP and REST. Now, the first difference is in terms of the meanings. We have already discussed this. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, whereas REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Moving on to the next difference, it will be based on the design. So the SOAP is designed in a very standardized protocol with predefined rules to follow. Whereas REST has an architectural style with loose guidelines and recommendations. Moving on to the approach, SOAP here is function driven. You must be wondering what is function driven. So it simply means that the data here is available as services. Example, get user. On the other hand, that is REST. The approach is usually data driven. That is data is available as resources. So I hope that's clear. Moving on to the next difference, we'll be talking about the statefulness. So SOAP by default is stateless. You'll always have to remember this is really important, but it's definitely possible to make a SOAP API stateful. On the other hand, REST is stateless. That is no server side sessions really occur. Moving on to the next difference, it's based on caching. Now in SOAP API calls cannot be cached, whereas on the other hand, that is REST API calls can be cached. So now in terms of caching, SOAP API calls cannot be cached, whereas on the other hand, REST API calls can be cached. Moving on to the security part, SOAP has WS security with SSL support. It also has a built-in ACID compilance. Now you must be wondering what is ACID compilance. Now for instance, if you need your financial transactions to be very secure, you can apply WS atomic transactions that are ACID compiled. ACID really stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability, which is an enterprise grade transaction quality. And one of the reasons why SOAP is still used when exchanging sensitive information in enterprise architecture is definitely because of ACID compilance. So SOAP security, you could say is very secure. 
On the other hand, REST supports HTTPS and SSL. Moving on to the performance of both of these web services, SOAP requires more bandwidth and computing power. That's where it falls behind. But on the other hand, REST requires very few resources, which makes it, you know, a little more powerful. Now talking about the message format, SOAP only works on XML based messaging protocol for exchanging information among computers. So in short, it is an application of the XML specification. But on the other hand, REST can take several formats like plain text, HTML, XML, JSON, YML, etc. So here again, REST proves to be more advantageous. Moving on to the transfer protocol, SOAP works on HTTP, SMTP, UDP and others, whereas REST only works on HTTP. So SOAP is really recommended for enterprise applications, high security applications, distributed environment, financial services, payment gateways, telecommunication services, etc. But it is recommended for you to use REST for public APIs for web services, mobile services and social networks. Now let's move on to the next part of the session and understand when one must use REST and SOAP. First, we'll discuss when one must use REST. So one of the most highly debatable topics is when REST should be used or when to use SOAP while designing web services. Now there are some key factors that really determine when each technology should be used for web services. REST services can be used in any of the following instances that I'll be discussing now. So in a scenario where there is limited resources and bandwidth, you should definitely use REST. Since SOAP messages are heavier in content and consume a far greater bandwidth, REST should definitely be used in instances where network bandwidth is a constraint. The next scenario where you could use REST is in statelessness. Now when there is a scenario when there is no need to maintain a state of information from one request to another, then definitely REST should be used. If you need proper information flow wherein some information from one request needs to flow into another, then SOAP is more suited for that purpose. Now I'll just explain you this with an example of an online purchasing site. So how do they work? Firstly, the user needs to add items which needs to be purchased to a cart and all of the cart items are then transferred to the payment page in order to complete the purchase. Now this is an example of an application which really needs the state feature. The state of the cart items needs to be transferred to the payment page for further processing. So the next scenario where one could use REST is for caching. Now if there is a need to cache a lot of requests then REST is the perfect solution. At times client could request for the same resource multiple times. This can eventually increase the number of requests which are sent to the server. Now by implementing a cache, the most frequent queries results can be stored in an intermediate location. So whenever the client requests for a resource, it will first check the cache. Now, if the resources exist, then it will not proceed to the server. So caching really helps in minimizing the amount of trips which are made to the web server. The next scenario is when there is a need of ease of coding. Coding REST services and subsequent implementation is far easier than SOAP. So if a quick win solution is required for web services, then REST is definitely the way to go. So now we'll discuss when to use SOAP. SOAP can be used when there is a need for asynchronous processing and subsequent invocation. Now if there's a requirement that the client needs a guaranteed level of reliability and security, then definitely the new SOAP standard of SOAP 1.2 and above provides a lot of additional features, especially when it comes to security. Also when there is a need of formal means of communication. Now, if both the client and the server have an agreement on the exchange format, then SOAP gives the rigid specifications for this type of interaction. Now, talking about the online purchasing site in which users add items to a cart before the payment is made. Now, let's assume that we have a web service that does the final payment. There can be a firm agreement that the web service will only accept the cart item name, unit price and quantity. Now, if such a scenario exists, then it's always better to use the SOAP protocol. The next scenario one could use SOAP is in stateful operations. Now if the application has a requirement that state needs to be maintained from one request to another, then SOAP standard provides the WS structure to support such requirements. Now that we know when to use SOAP, let's move ahead and talk about the challenges in REST and SOAP API. First, we'll discuss the challenges in SOAP. 
Now, one of the key challenges of the SOAP API is definitely the WSDL document itself. The WSDL document is what tells the client all of the operations that can be performed by the web service. Now, this document will contain all the information, such as data types being used in the SOAP messages and what all operations are available via the web service. Now, this is just a code snippet, which is part of a sample WSDL file. Now, if the WSDL file were to change as per the business requirements, now, for example, if the message name had to change from get endorsing border request to get endorsing request or something of that sort, then this would mean that all the clients who are currently connecting to this web service would then need to make this corresponding change in their code to accommodate the change in the WSDL file. This shows the biggest challenge of the WSDL file, which is the tight contract between the client and the server. And that one change could cause a large impact on the whole client applications. Now, the other key challenge is the size of the SOAP messages, which get transferred from the client to the server. Now, because of the large messages using SOAP in places where bandwidth is a constraint can definitely be a big issue. Moving on to the next part, let's discuss the challenges in REST API. The first and the biggest challenge is the lack of security. REST does not impose any sort of security like SOAP. And this is why REST is very appropriate for public available URLs. But when it comes down to confidential data being passed between the client and the server, REST is the worst mechanism to be used for web services. The next challenge is lack of state. Most web applications require a stateful mechanism. Now we already talked about the purchasing site, which had the mechanism of having a shopping cart. And here it is required to know the number of items in the shopping cart before the actual purchase is made, right? Unfortunately, the burden of maintaining this state lies with the client, which just makes the client application heavier and difficult to maintain. So with this, we come to the end of today's session of REST versus SOAP. If you have any queries, leave them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoy this session. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!